Good morning. Well, it's morning here, but good morning. Welcome to Tala Talks NICU. This morning, we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the late preterm infant. So infants born at between 34 and 37 weeks. 37 weeks onwards of gestation is considered full term. And then between 34 weeks and 37 weeks is considered late preterm. So if you are a mother about to have a late preterm infant, or if you've already had a late preterm infant, then congratulations. This will be very educational for you. And if you are a nurse who takes care, or somebody who works in the NICU who takes care of late preemies, then congratulations, because you've literally chosen the best field in medicine. So let's start. So late preterm infants, like we said, born between 34 and 37 weeks. Up until about 2007, these infants used to be considered near-term infants because they looked pretty old, they could pretty much eat and, and breathe pretty well by themselves, and so people were kind of tricked into allowing them to act like full-term infants. However, we know that they have a lot more morbidity, so they're much more likely to have feeding issues or breathing issues, and they're also much more likely to end up getting readmitted after they leave the hospital. So in 2007, the AAP, the American Academy of Pediatrics, released a statement saying that we should be calling these babies late preterm infants, just to remind ourselves that there is a much higher risk that they are going to need some specialized NICU care rather than just kind of the routine care they get with the nurses in the nursery. So at about 34 weeks gestation, most of those babies are going to need some sort of NICU care. We're talking about 90%, to the point that in many NICUs, especially in America, if you're born below 35 weeks, that's an automatic admission to the NICU. At 35 weeks gestation, there's 50-50% chance that the baby's going to need the NICU. And at 36 weeks, there's still a 25% chance that that baby will need specialized care. We'll start with the first one, which is breathing issues. Most often in a preemie baby, this is called respiratory distress syndrome. Pretty much all the organs in a baby's body are formed by in the first trimester, so by 12, 13 weeks. But they all mature at kind of different speeds. The lungs are one of the last organs to mature, which, if you think about it, isn't that shocking. Because in utero, the lungs are full of fluid. So they're not really functioning as lungs at all when the baby's still inside the mummy. Really, they have a larger transition to go through than a lot of the other organs. The placenta is doing the job of the lungs in utero. It's doing the breathing. So after the baby's born, the lungs have to go from being filled with fluid to suddenly being able to exchange the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. So they're not generally ready to work properly as lungs until term. We're talking 37, 38 weeks at least. The other issue is, is that there's a substance that's secreted by the lungs called Surfactant. Yes. yes, so proud of you. <laughs> Surfactant is like a dish soap that basically is secreted by the lungs and breaks up little globules inside the lungs and allows the lungs to expand easily. Surfactant is not really produced in preemie babies. It's not produced really fully until term. So very often preterm babies are born with insufficient surfactant. Luckily, some geniuses figured out how to make that surfactant, or rather how to extract it from different animals. And so now we have vials of surfactant that we can give to premature babies. But when we go to your preterm delivery in the operating room or in the delivery room, the first thing that we try to evaluate is how well the baby is breathing by himself or by herself. Because obviously we're ready for the fact that the baby may not be able to breathe enough by themselves, which means we may have to put a little bit of oxygen on their nose with a cannula. We may have to put a CPAP mask where air is continuously blowing into their lungs. Or sometimes we even have to put the breathing tube down their trachea into the lungs and actually breathe for them. Sometimes we also have to give the surfactant down into the endotracheal tube, into their lungs, to help their lungs expand. The good thing is, is that if late preterm babies do need any extra support with their breathing, generally they only need it for a few days. So that's the first thing that we worry about with preemie babies. The second reason why late preterm infants need the NICU is because of apnea prematurity. Apnea prematurity is a type of apnea that premature infants get. And basically, it's because their brains and their nervous systems aren't fully matured. So their brains and their nervous systems are literally forgetting 
to tell their lungs to take a breath. Either they can end up with periodic breathing, which is when their lungs just kind of slow down and they don't breathe as fast, or they will have apnea, which is where they're just lying there and they won't take a breath for 10 seconds or 20 seconds or whatever it is. Obviously, if this goes on long enough, then it can be very dangerous for the baby. Their heart rate starts going down, their oxygen levels start going down. Um, so they have to stay in the hospital where we can observe them and monitor them and you know, give them a little stimulation to come back up again before they go home. Most babies grow out of this. They start growing out of it at about 33 weeks, but it can be up to even 36, 37. Even some term babies can have apnea or prematurity. So if a baby does have an apneic event, then we need to watch that baby in the unit for at least five days to make sure that they're not going to do it again before we are able to send them home. The third issue is thermoregulation or temperature control. Obviously a late preterm infant is smaller than a full-term infant. A lot of the growth of all babies happens within the third trimester, especially kind of that last little bit. So late preemie infants are born with much thinner skin as well as a lot less fat on their bodies. So it's very easy for them to get cold. Also, they don't really have a good mechanism to kind of warm themselves up if they are getting borderline cold. So it's not like they have great stores of glycogen or whatever or to shiver more or they can't just kind of get up and go put on a woolly blanket and a woolly hat or whatever. So it can be very dangerous for a baby to have a borderline temperature. They can go from having a borderline temperature to absolutely dangerously lethally freezing in a short amount of time. So we have to watch the temperature of these babies and make sure that they have the ability to be able to keep themselves warm by themselves without needing like 20 different blankets before they go home. So that would require either a radiant warmer where we lie them in a crib and there's like heat coming from, we call them kind of the top of the giraffes, or the isolettes or the incubators, those kind of transparent boxes that are constantly measuring the temperature of the baby and then providing them the warmth they need to keep their body's temperature under a continuous control. The fourth one, and I'm never gonna have one of these without mentioning this word, is sepsis. If a mother goes into labor early, one of the first things that we worry about is that there's an infection brewing in the amniotic fluid. So if that baby ends up delivering, then obviously we have to worry that that baby may have an infection. So very often we have to at least screen the baby for an infection, check the blood and everything. And if we're at all worried about how the baby is doing, then we have to start antibiotics. So yes, ruling out sepsis is an important reason to bring a baby to the NICU. The fifth reason why we need to bring a late preterm baby to the NICU is hyperbilirubinemia, or another way of saying that is jaundice. Jaundice is the yellow pigmentation in the skin and in the blood. And we only really worry about that number if it gets really high. So if it stays somewhere above kind of 20, 25, 30 for a long period of time, then that yellow pigment gets into the brain and causes Jaundice? Oh, that was it. Sorry. No, it is jaundice. Because it's <laughs> the, the, only, the, only the, fourth, the fourth word. The fourth word. The only. Oh, yeah. The only reason why we follow jaundice is because we're worried about connectorus. We're worried about a lot of that yellow pigment getting into the brain and causing brain damage. Up until that point, jaundice is not dangerous. We're only worried about it because of its tendency to cause connectorus at very high levels. So with premature infants, they're more likely to have a higher level of that bilirubin because all their metabolism is a lot slower. The way that their liver enzymes work, how quickly they're able to extract the bilirubin from their gut, that's gonna be a lot slower. And two, their nervous system isn't as well formed. So the bilirubin that's in the blood can probably get into the brain slightly easier. So we actually worry about slightly lower numbers in late preterm babies. So a borderline number in a term baby of the jaundice level would probably be really high for a preemie baby and something that we'd want to do something about, which for us is normally make sure they're adequately hydrated and put under the blue light so the babies can get rid of that bilirubin by peeing it out. The sixth reason Score. for a late preterm baby needing to come to the NICU actually happens very commonly and that is hypoglycemia or a low blood sugar in the baby. Low blood sugars in babies can be very dangerous. They can increase apnea, worsen respiratory distress and if they get really low and stay there for a long time they can end up with seizures and obviously brain damage. So this is something that we definitely need to avoid. 
Late preterm babies, as you can imagine, have less ability to make glycogen and store the glycogen. Glycogen is the source of the glucose. The glycogen gets broken down so that the glucose could be used as fuel. Late preemie babies, and especially like very small preemie babies, have much smaller amounts of glycogen. So they're at a higher risk of becoming hypoglycemic. So if a baby does become hypoglycemic, which normally in the first 24 hours of life, we would like the sugar level to be about 45. If it's less than that, then very often they have to be admitted to the NICU and started on an IV with sugar water going directly into their vein. And then slowly their bodies will adapt to being able to make and use their sugar more efficiently and will slowly be able to wean them off the IV fluids. But that's another very, very common reason for why a preemie baby needs to come to the NICU. The seventh reason why babies need to come to the NICU if they're late preterm is easily the most common, and that is feeding issues. So babies develop the ability to eat at about 34 weeks. That's when they start to develop the right amount of coordination to be able to do everything that's required for them to be able to eat. So they need to be able to cry and realize they're hungry, cry, alert somebody else that they need the food. They need to be able to root. So you put a bottle or the breast near the mouth and they need to kind of be able to go in that direction. They need to be able to latch. And then when you put the bottle or the breast in their mouth, they need to be able to protect their airway and they need to be able to suck and swallow and pace themselves so they're not just kind of like chugging it all down and forgetting to breathe. So lots and lots of complicated things need to happen for a baby to be able to learn how to eat. Normally that starts developing at 34 weeks, but it really doesn't fully mature until 36 to 37 weeks. So in the meantime, we either have to supplement what they're, whatever they're able to eat by mouth with an IV, or we put a feeding tube down or a garbage tube down from their nose that goes directly into their stomach or their mouth that goes directly into the stomach. And very often these late preemie babies spend two, three, four weeks in the NICU just slowly going up on how much they're able to eat with the bottle or by the breast and therefore us having to give them less directly into the stomach down their garbage tube. After they have shown us that they can eat how much we expect them to eat with the bottle or the breast only and show us that they're gaining weight and taking a good volume, then we take the garbage tube out. After the garbage tube is out, they still have to stay in the hospital at least 48 hours to make sure that they don't exhaust themselves again and that they're still continuing to have the energy to keep up with the food intake and show us that they're gaining weight. And the last reason why babies need to come to the NICU is because of their weight. So there really isn't an absolute weight or age for a baby to be able to go home from the NICU. A baby can go home when they're doing everything that we would expect a full-time baby to be able to do, which is breathe by themselves, eat by themselves, show us that they're gaining weight, not getting dehydrated, being able to keep themselves warm. However, the smallest car seats that are made are made for infants that are four pounds. So it's very important that when we send a baby home that they are safe in a car seat. And the main reason for that is that baby's necks are as stable as kids and adults necks. They don't have the same strength that we have in our necks. So if a baby is in a car seat, what we worry about is that their necks are just gonna kind of fall forward and block off their airway. And that is why every baby that's born early, we end up doing a car seat test in, which is we take that baby and we put them in a car seat for an hour and a half, for 90 minutes, and we check their oxygen, we check their heart rate, we check their breathing during that time to make sure that they are stable in a car seat. So if a baby is less than four pounds, it needs to stay in the nursery or in the NICU until it gains enough weight for it to be able to go home in a car seat. late preterm infant needs to be admitted to the NICU. I hope you learned from it today, I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel, Tala Talks NICU, so that you can stay up to date with all these fascinating lectures we have planned. And go ahead and hit the bell so that you are notified of when the new episodes come out so you literally don't have to spend a single second of your life missing a video that's out that you haven't watched yet.